It's a device that helps you know the temperature inside or outside of your body, tells you if your food is ready, or how you should dress to be comfortable. But who invented the temperature-telling gadget that we rely on every single day? And why do some countries measure in different scales? Lift your tongue and say, ah, because this is the history of the thermometer. To discover when temperature was first being recorded, we must travel back to the Renaissance period. One of the first means of knowing whether it was hot or cold outside, other than sticking your head out the window, was the device known as the thermoscope. While these did not supply specific temperature readings, thermoscopes did indicate temperature shifts. It was believed that Galileo discovered the specific principle on which the device is based and built the first thermoscope in 1593 AD. Galileo put down his telescope to work on a cylinder filled with liquid and orbs of glass of different mass. Since water gets more or less dense when hotter or colder, these orbs would sink or rise depending on the temperature. During the 17th century, four inventors would be credited with creating similar devices to indicate temperature. Galileo, Santorio Santorio, Robert Flood, and Cornelius Drebbel. Each inventor would add his own expertise and personal touch to the device. For example, in 1612, the Italian inventor Santorio Santorio became the first person to put a numerical scale on his thermoscope. It was designed to be placed in a patient's mouth for temperature taking. And speaking of temperature, there are three accepted scales of temperature used today. Kelvin, used in science, Celsius, used globally, and Fahrenheit, used mostly in the United States. The Grand Duke of Tuscany, Ferdinand II, created the first liquid enclosed glass thermometer in 1654. 55 years later, Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit, a German physicist, invented the alcohol thermometer in 1709 and the mercury thermometer in 1714. In a mercury or alcohol thermometer, liquid expands when heated and contracts when cooled. The length of the liquid column runs longer or shorter depending on the temperature. The Fahrenheit scale split the freezing and boiling points of water at 180 degrees. Fahrenheit based his scale on the point in which he could get salt water to freeze, which was about 32 degrees, and the temperature at which it would boil about 212 degrees. Fahrenheit based his temperature scale on the temperature of the human body that was mistakenly believed to be 96 degrees. Today, Fahrenheit scale has been adjusted to the correct core body temperature of about 98.6 degrees. In 1742, the Celsius scale was invented by Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius. His readings used 100 degrees separation between the freezing point of 0 degrees Celsius and the boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. This was all based on pure water at sea level. For many centuries, this was known as the Swedish scale. In 1848, the first Baron Kelvin went to the extreme with his Kelvin scale. This method uses the same units as the Celsius scale, but begins at absolute zero the temperature at which everything, including air, freezes solid. Absolute zero is zero Kelvin, the equivalent to negative 273 degrees Celsius or around negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. By the mid 20th century, most of the world adopted Celsius as the means of measuring temperature. Only a handful of countries still use Fahrenheit today. So why does the United States still use Fahrenheit? Well, around 1790, Celsius was integrated into the metric system. The metric system's simplicity and scientific utility helped spread it and the Celsius scale throughout the world. The UK began metrication, the process of switching all measurements to the metric system around 1865. Virtually every other former British colony switched over as well. These changes, all happening around the same time, prompted the U.S. to consider to going metric. Congress passed a law in 1975 called the Metric Conversion Act that was supposed to begin the process of metrication here in the United States. 
The act set up a metric board to supervise the country's transition. However, because metrication is voluntary rather than mandatory, the public had a major say in the matter. And lots of Americans didn't want to leave new systems for temperatures or weights. The transition phase was ultimately a disaster, causing President Reagan to dismantle the metric board in 1982. Throughout most of early history, thermometers remained cumbersome to transport and use. Even in the mid-19th century, the medical thermometer was still over a foot long and took as long as 20 minutes to take an accurate temperature reading. Between 1866 and 1867, Sir Thomas Clifford Allbutt designed a medical thermometer that was much more portable, measuring only six inches long and taking about five minutes to record a patient's temperature. Temperatures can be taken from many areas on and in the human body, including the mouth, the armpit, and the forehead. Modern thermometers use the ear to get an accurate temperature. This can be credited to Dr. Theodore H. Benziger, who invented the ear thermometer in 1964. Outside the body, thermometers have captured some of the most amazing temperatures and help us understand the extremes of our planet. The highest temperature ever recorded on Earth was 58 degrees Celsius or 136 degrees Fahrenheit in the Libyan desert, while the coldest temperature ever measured was negative 88 degrees Celsius or negative 126 degrees Fahrenheit at the Vostok station in Antarctica. So whether we're sending thermometers in the deepest space or the deepest crevices of a human body to register temperatures, these little devices have been an amazing way to understand the world around us.